today again. So we are now in our week 3, module 3, in our subject, Practical Research 2. Today, we're going to discuss the kind of variable and their uses. So prior to writing of research problem, statement, and hypothesis, every researcher must have a group of variables. So it's very important that we're going to know who will become our uh, variable. So sila sino ba yung mga papag-aralan natin, tatanungin natin, or uh, magiging uh, bida doon sa ating study. So ang tawag doon is variable. So in this lesson, we're going to discuss the, the most essential learning competencies. And these are as follows. Number one, define and characterize variable. Number two, distinguish independent variable from dependent variables. And number three, determine the connection between variables and the research problem. So let's discuss first the meaning of variable. So when we say variable, it is a characteristic of an individual or organization that can be observed and measured, and it can vary among people or organizations being studied. According, it's, it is according to Creswell 2002. It comes from the root word vary or simply can change. So when we say variable, yun nga, uh, we can uh, study okay, individual diba? or an organization. Okay, The variables is can be observed and Measure. So, ibig sabihin, sila yung mga i-observe natin. Sila yung isusukati natin. Pwede siyang tao or organization. Okay? Pwede siyang uh, mag-iba-iba. Okay? So, yun yung tinatawag natin variable. Yan. Example. Okay? The variable sex has two attributes, male and female. So, gusto mong pag-aralan, babae at lalaki. So, yun yung ating variable. Okay, gusto nating pag-aralan is yung income. Okay, for example, income ng uh, taga Brooks Point. So, pwede natin siyang, uh, ang mga variable natin, sino ba yung nagsasahod ng 5,000? Sino ba yung nagsasahod ng 10,000? Sino ba nag receive ng salary na 15,000 dito sa Brooks Point? So, yung tinatawag natin na variable. Okay, remember, variable should should have at least two attributes, otherwise it is constant. So, at least two attributes. Meron siyang uh, dalawang attributes or pagpipilian. So, we have four types of variable. The first one is nominal variable. It represents categories that cannot be ordered in any particular way. So, hindi na siya in-order or hindi na siya sinusunod-sunod. Okay, kahit hindi siya sunod-sunod, okay, so siya pwede, siya rin, uh, yan yung mga variable na hindi siya, hindi siya, uh, walang ordering, ordering of cases. Okay, either it is two or more categories, but is that it does not uh, imply ordering of cases. Example dyan, yan, uh, example biological sex, male and female. Blood type, race, political party, political affiliation, zip code, eye color, religion. Hindi naman natin in order pa, di ba, yung di ba, color ng mata. Mas mataas ba yung blue, uh, brown eyes, black. Di ba, walang din na siya in order. So, kahit saan doon siya, uh, pwedeng piliin. Kaya ang tawag doon is nominal variable. Another one is ordinal variable. So, when we say ordinal variable, it represents categories that can be ordered from greatest to smallest. Yan. So, pwede siyang i-order from greatest to smallest or to smallest to greatest. Order. From the word ordinal. Order. So, yan siya. Hindi naman tayo, uh, pag naghalimbawa, yung, yung pag natin is grade level. Siyempre, unahin natin yung Grade 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, naka-order siya. Satisfaction rating. Kapag pipili uh, yung ating mga respondents, mayroon na siyang satisfied, not, satis uh, not satisfied, satisfied, very satisfied. Diba? Naka-order siya. So, yun. Eh. Social economic status, rank. So, those are an example of ordinal variable.
another one is interval variable. So when we say interval variable, it has values that lie along with an evenly dispersed range of numbers. Yan. Pag sinabi natin employee net worth, pH level, body temperature, SAT score, 2,000, 200 to 500. Meron siyang sa gitna. Okay, for example, body temperature from 36 to 40. So, hindi natin alam kung um, saan. Pag na-test natin, saan ba uh, tatama yung temperature ng isang tao? Sa 36 ba? 37, 38, 39, 40. Okay, so kaya tinatawag siyang interval variable. Page level. Okay, may mga, hindi ko alam kung anong page level, di ba? So, yung kapag tinetest, so from, uh, hindi alam kung saan lalabas, kung anong klaseng page level ng tao. Next is ratio variable. So, when we say ratio variable, has variable that lie along with evenly dispersed range of numbers when there is absolute zero. It possesses the properties of interval variable and has clear definition of zero. So, when we say ratio variable, uh, mayroon siyang clear definition of zero. So, tinatanggap niya kahit zero yung uh, measurement. Okay? So, yun siya. Example, those amount, concentration, weight, Distance, reaction rate, flow rate, pulse rate, length. Okay, so yun ba? Pulse rate, zero. Wala ng pulso. Okay, so kasama siya sa ratio variable. Okay, so those are the four kinds of variables. Okay, so aside from that, we have independent variables. Okay, so independent variables, those are probably cause, influence, or affect outcome. They are invariably called treatment, manipulated, antecedent, or predictor variable. Okay? Pag sinabi natin independent variable, they are the cause or they are the influence. Sila yung dahilan kung bakit nangyayari yung isang uh, isang uh, research or isang situation so, it is the case variable or one responsible for conditions that act on something else to bring about changes. So, sila yung nagkakos ng change doon sa dependent variable. Example, a study on relationship of parental support in academic performance of senior high school students in Nara National High School. So, ang ating uh, independent variable dito is parents parental support. Because it influences the outcome of performance of the students. Siyempre, uh, kung mas supportive, supportive yung parents, mas mataas yung grade ng bata. Gusto nang pag-aralan kung totoo nga ba na kapag uh, may support yung parent, ay mas mataas yung grade ng students. So, yung may effect doon sa grade ng students ay yung parental support. Kaya sila ay, uh, kaya ito ay kinukonsidered natin as independent variable. Another one, uh, mayroon tayong variable, is the dependent variable. Those depend on independent variable. They are the outcome or result on the influence of independent variable. For the given example above, academic performance of senior high school student in our national high school is a dependent variable because it is depending on the kind of parental support showed which make their performance high or low. Okay, yun. So, ang ating dependent variable dito is yung grade ng student. So, nakadepende yung grade ng student doon sa support ng parent. Okay? Kung sabihin, kung mas supportive yung parents, mas mataas yung grade ng student. Okay. A teacher-researcher is studying the effect of cooperative learning activities, structure group toward academic achievement in science. So, ito example. So, meron tayong tatlo. Hindi ba natin na-discuss itong intervening? Pero, kung titingnan natin intervening, nandun siya sa gitna. Okay, unang-una, meron tayong independent variable, and we have intervening variable, and academic achievement of student in science. So, gusto natin pag-aralan dito is yung, yung effect ng cooperative learning activity sa academic achievement sa science. Teacher researcher is studying the effect of cooperative learning. So, gusto nilang malaman kung kapag nagtutulungan ba, or mayroong cooperative learning activity, Mas tataas ba yung academic performance sa science? So, yun. So, yung ginamit nila dito is cooperative learning. So, nag, 
ano sila, tinry ng teacher na gamitin sa klase yung cooperative learning. Kaya nagtutulungan group study. Kung tataas ba yung grade ng estudyante sa science. Yun. Pero mayroon tayong tinatawag na intervening. Okay, may mga re uh, reason din kung bakit uh, maaaring hindi tumaas yung uh, grade ng bata sa science. Pwedeng ang estudyante, ang ugali niya is either extrovert or introvert. Students are, who are introvert enjoyed working in groups and tend to participate in cooperative learning more than introvert students. Pag sinabi kasi natin extrovert, ito yung mahilig makipagkaibigan, mahilig makipaghalubilo. Pag introvert naman, ito yung mga tao na um, shy, mahiyain, tahimik. Okay? So, pwedeng maka-affect siya. Maaring may student na ayaw ng group activities. Okay? Yun yung mga introvert students. So, yun. Pwedeng kahit na mag-employ mag yung teacher or maglagay yung teacher ng cooperative learning, pwedeng introvert, hindi makipag-cooperate. So, hindi pa rin magtaas yung grade niya sa science. Okay? So, yun ang tinatawag natin intervening variable. So, the student trait like being introvert and extrovert is the intervening variable because it mediates the effects of cooperative learning activities and, and academic performance in science. So, yun, ito na, yung meaning ng intervening variable or mediating variable. Strand between the independent and dependent variable. And it shows the effect of the independent and dependent variable. So, stand between. So, ibig sabihin, tumatayo siya dun sa gitna ng independent and dependent variable. Aside from that, we have also control variable, a special type of independent variable that is measured in big study because they potentially influence the dependent variable. Researcher use statistical procedure, sample analysis of covariance to control these groups. They may be demographic or personal variable that need to be controlled. And that tr the true influence of the independent variable or dependent can be determined in an experiment. It is variable that is held constant. In a study, determining the effect of exposure to different colored lights on the growth of the plant. The control variable are the type of plant. The amount of soil and the amount of water given to plants. This variable are controlled so that the plant grow can be attributed with certainty to exposure to different colored lights. So, ito yung uh, control variable natin ay yung pwede natin i-control. Halimbawa, gusto natin malaman yung epekto ng exposure ng different colored lights doon sa grow ng halaman. Halimbawa, mayroon kang isang tanim na sitaw nilagyan mo ng iba't ibang color uh, ng ilaw. Gusto mong malaman kung saan doon yung ilaw yung nakakatulong sa uh, pagpapalaki ng halaman. Okay? Pero yung control variable natin doon, yung uri ng halaman. Baka may, may, may ibang uri ng halaman. Amount of soil. Pwede natin i-control. Okay? Pwede pare-pareho sila ng halaman, pare-pareho sila ng uri ng lupa, tubig na nilalagay. Okay? Para ma-identify natin kung saan sa mga lights yung mas uh, makakatulong para mapalaki o mapabilis yung lak paglaki ng halaman. Okay, yung tinatawag natin na control variable. So, yung control variable is kaya natin i-control okay, para makuha natin yung totoong result. Another one is the confounding variable. Those are not measured nor observed in the study. So, ito yung mga variable na ito, yung hindi natin nasukat at na-measure sa study. From the given example, academic performance of the student in our national high school is dependent because it depending on the kind of parental support showed. Okay. So, yun. Let's uh, try this uh, exercise. Identify the level of measurement involved in the following research situation. Use the following code. So, we have nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. ratio. Number one is the top 10 songs for the week. Bakit siya ordinal? Kasi top 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Alamin natin kung ano ba yung top 1 na song. Top 2, top 3, top 4. Kaya siya ay ordinal. So, meron siyang pagka sunod sunod Number 2, fashion designer shares the top most famous fashion statement for the year. Top 10 pa rin. So, kaya siya, tinata kaya siya ay ordinal variable. Number 3, Mrs. Gabayron STEM 11 advisor survey here. Her student's health status, whether it's normal, overweight, 
obese wasted or severely wasted. So, siya ay nominal. Kasi, uh, hindi natin alam kung hindi naman siya natin pwedeng i-order. Okay, wala siyang, ano nga kanina yung nominal variable? Wala siyang ordering of case. Number four, Miss Rhea, the doctor secretary, determines the weight of the baby being brought to the clinic for treatment. So, ratio variable siya. Weight. Diba? Kaya ratio siya. Number five, student wants to determine the average of the correct that he got from the last practical research to quiz. So, alamin din ng, ng teacher kung ilan yung nakakuha ng mga ng average, yung average kasi malaman yung average ng student na nakakuha sa ng practical sa practical research to. So, siya pa rin ay ratio variable. Number 6, the researcher want to find the number of hours na senior high school students spend using social media. So, gusto niya malaman ratio din kung ilan yung number of hours. Vegetarian assistant records the breeds of dog that are brought for treatment in the veterinar veterinar veterinary clinic. So, letter A. Ano na yung letter A? That is nominal variable. Number 8, you should like to find out the number of minutes it takes for each member of the class to go from their respective house to school. Gusto mo malaman yung gaano kalayo yung ilang minuto ba yung uh, ginugugol lang sudyante uh, sa pag Punta sa paaralan. Okay, galing sa kanilang bahay. So, ratio pa rin. Ratio variable. Number nine, a teacher asked the class about the degree of difficulty. Is it moderate or difficult sa student? Saan? Mahirap ba? Madali? Gusto niyang i-research yung kanyang exam sa math? So, yan ay ordin ordinal. Kasi pwede silang in-order siya. Mula sa easy, moderate to difficult. Number ten, a geologist from the Philippine Atmospheric, Geophysical, and Astronomical Services Administration pag-asa determines the daily temperature for June. So, siya ay ratio variable.